Hey guys, welcome back to the CNC Auto Channel. Your friendly neighborhood mechanic here. And today we're back on Project Retro Joe. This is that 1978 Corvette that's been off the road for about 20 years. So I'm going through this thing system by system. And now we're working on the cooling system of the car. This thing's really nasty. You're not going to believe what we find inside of it. So stick around. and Let's go through this one piece at a time. And I'll show you how easy it can be. Okay, now I know you're excited about your project. You want to get it on the road as fast as possible, but don't overlook this step with the cooling system. If your car's been off the road for a while, the water and the coolant inside of there could be really nasty. You don't want to circulate that stuff all through the nooks and crannies of your engine. So you can start your car just to see if it's going to run without doing all this work, but don't let it run for very long, okay? So we're going to go through this system one step at a time, one piece at a time, and we're going to clean, we're going to overhaul, we're going to make sure that it's just right so that the health of this engine stays good while we drive it around. So come on, let's get into it. First thing is a visual inspection. So just put the car up in the air, pop the hood, start looking around. And what you're looking for, first off, is any evidence that the cooling system has been leaking. Uh, one of the best giveaways of this is uh, the, cor the corrosion, the green corrosion that's going to happen on anything that uh, might have some copper in it, like the radiator. Uh, in this case, uh, we're looking at the underside of the front of the car, and you can see that green down there in the center of the bottom of that photo. That's the outlet of the, the lower outlet of the radiator, and it's uh, giving us a hint that we need to look a little closer at that. Here we are looking a little closer at that corner of the uh, radiator that's exposed and you can really see that corrosion on the fins of this radiator. And if you peek up behind that shroud, man, it, it gets worse. So we know that this thing's going to need a radiator. All right, so the radiator's got to come out. Um, so you're going to have to remove all of the stuff to get it out of the way. Um, in order to get that out, you're going to have to, of course, take off the air cleaner and the duct work there. It just has a couple of clips that hold it in place. No big deal. And then the, uh, the fan and the shroud around the fan. And I'll show you that in greater detail here in a second. So here's how you get that fan out of there. You see where I've circled here, the, there are four nuts um, on studs that go into the front of the water pump pulley. Now you take those nuts off and that fan, that clutch fan, will come right off and out of the way. And you can tilt it and get it out of the, the uh, shroud that's around it very easily. And that gives you a whole lot more room here to work in a second. I'll show you the, the area cleared out. Here it is with the fan removed. And like I said, lots of room to work once that fan's out of your way. Next will be the fan shroud. And it's held in with two bolts. Uh, the left image here, I'm pointing towards those bolts there at the top. Once you take those out, you can wiggle that fan shroud straight up and out of the way once that fan within it is removed. Uh, on the right is the bracket uh, that's holding down the radiator. Uh, there's two bolts on the back of the core support where I uh, show these yellow arrows. Remove those two bolts and then that bracket just lifts up off the top of the radiator and then uh, you can remove the radiator hoses and slip the radiator out. Okay, now here's what you get to work with as far as space. Opens it up very nicely. Uh, once that radiator, the fan shroud, the fan are all out of the way. With all that room in front of the engine now, you can look down in front uh, of the, uh, the block here, and you'll get to the pulleys, all the hoses. You can take off all of the uh, uh, fan belts and uh, then you'll have access to the water pump. And the water pump is just held on with four bolts, holds it to the front of the engine block. Once you take those bolts out, then the water pump can just be pried off. Here we are looking down inside of the water pump. You can see all the rust and corrosion down in there. It's a good indication that this thing is in need of replacement. This is the old water pump and comparing it to the new water pump. And you see on the old one, you'll have to take the studs out of the front that hold the fan on 
and put those into the new one. It's a good idea to use a little Loctite just to hold it in place so they don't back out. You can see the mating surfaces here on the block where the water pump mates up to it. Nice and cleaned off. You want to use some Scotch Bride or a little wire wheel or something. Get all the rust and corrosion and old gasket and RTV off of there so that the new one will seat correctly and then seal very well. It's always a good idea on parts like this that are corroded to go ahead and clean the threads of the bolts that you take out, as shown here on the left, and also tap out the holes that they thread into, especially if those holes have any kind of rust or corrosion or RTV in them. Here's a really important tip for you guys. This bolt here that I'm pointing to, it goes into the water case jacket, and so it needs some RTV or sealant on the threads whenever you put that bolt back in, or else you'll have a water leak here. Don't you just love the look of these shiny, clean, new parts? Here's the water pump installed again. Wow, look at this. Cracked open the thermostat housing, and this is what I find. It's just full of slime and rust and corrosion and no thermostat. So they were running without a thermostat on this vehicle. Perhaps they had an overheating problem due to some leaks and some of the poor condition of the other components. Um, but uh, we'll get this cleaned up. You definitely want to flush the engine out and get all this crud out of there. You don't want that stuff to keep circulating around your engine. Okay, here's the thermostat housing all buttoned back up. Nice new thermostat housing gasket. Good clean thermostat, good flush of the system. It's ready to rock. So look at this, man. This is the radiator I pulled out of this Corvette. Look at all that green, all of these leaks. Uh, zoom in here on the right to probably one of the worst along the side cap. Uh, man, this thing was way overdue. Just a couple more shots here. Some of the uh, leaks from this old radiator. Oh, uh, man, it was definitely due. Looking down inside of the radiator, you can really see that rust and corrosion inside of there. Look at that pile of rust that just started to pour out of the lower radiator uh, pipe there on the right. Oh man, this thing, as I said, was way overdue. Hey, do me a favor. If you're enjoying this video, if you like this content on the C3, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really would be a, a great favor to us. Appreciate you guys. And look at this beauty. This is the new all-aluminum, high-efficiency, high-flow radiator. And looking down inside of that, you can see how nice and clean, large those passages are. Man, this thing will cool it off way better. Here's the lower corner of the new radiator. Nice TIG welded around the edges. Nice brass petcock valve. All new. And if you remember, this is where all that green crusties were on the old original radiator. All right, nice brand new hoses here. It's a nice AC Delco little radiator hose. They come preformed, fits nice in there. Won't have any more problems with leaks on that. Got to take care of these issues, especially because the rats had come in here and chewed all over these hoses trying to get a drink. So this is looking down along the passenger side of the new radiator, and this is where the transmission cooler lines come into the radiator. Uh, don't forget these rubber hoses that run from the transmission cooler to uh, the transmission lines. Uh, they will be just as dry rot and cracked and leaking as the coolant hoses, and it's important to go ahead and replace all of that at the same time. One thing you do need to be careful at, uh, at this step about is when you're putting that fan shroud back in place, it's kind of a tight fit trying to get it to slide down in front of your radiator, and uh, you want to make sure that you don't scrape across that radiator and bend all of those fins or it'll be a little less efficient on cooling if you do. Here it is all coming back together. We got the fan back in place. We got the fan shroud and that new beautiful aluminum radiator. Starting to see the uh, light at the end of the tunnel now. Okay, so we got all the major issues de taken care of with this cooling system and now she's ready to run for a little while. After you're sure that it'll run and cool itself, then you can work on things like the heater and the heater hoses and things like that. That's not necessary for it to run. That's just creature comforts later. But the main thing is check the system. This one and yours probably, if it's been off the road for a while, had a lot of corrosion, a lot of rust inside of it. The mice chewed up these hoses. You don't want to leave those kinds of things on your vehicle. You want to make sure everything's nice and fresh. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something. If you like these videos, go check out my others on this 
C3. They're helpful for any car, really, that's been off the road. And uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you again. God bless.